Have you ever had a life event that just rocked you to your core? Like it made you question core beliefs, things that you thought were firm, foundational, and say, oh my goodness, have I been wrong this whole time? So what if something that cataclysmic happens within our religious organizations? Good morning, friends. My name is Greg Simpson. I'm a minister in the United Church of Canada. I think we often get stuck on believing that our faith never changes, our religion never changes. We do use words like God never changes, and I'm pretty comfortable with that. But humans' relationship with God? Holy moly, that has run the complete gamut of things, and even humans' ways of describing God has changed massively over the years. And I don't mean like it started out bad and has gotten good, or started out good and has gotten bad. I mean that it's just all over the map. It's not even a difference in time, a difference in geography. Back before I was in full-time ministry, I was doing a bunch of pulpit supply. It was also part of a a Christian band that I was in. We'd often go to a church and do like their anniversary service, and then I would preach. We'd do a whole service. So because of that, I got a chance to visit lots of different churches in quite a fairly decent-sized area in my little chunk of southwestern Ontario. And we were at Presbyterian churches and Anglican churches and think the odd Lutheran, definitely some Roman Catholic um, and United, we visited lots of different churches. And what I realized that not many people get a chance to know is that within a particular town, there is more similarity denomination to denomination than from that denomination to another town. So for example, the Presbyterian Church, the United Church, and the Anglican Church in Glencoe, pick the town I grew up in, they all have more similarity than just going from the Presbyterians in Glencoe down this road to the Presbyterians in Wardsville. The geographic difference was bigger than the denominational difference. Now, I'm sure that's not going to be the same in every single case, but it taught me to be super conscious and aware of how different our faith journeys are and even how different our religions are place to place, time to time. Which then begs the question, why do we get so stuck on things that we think can't ever change? Like, who's the in-group? What group gets counted as you belong to us or you don't belong to us? And unfortunately, Christianity and religions throughout the world have a long history of drawing lines to say these people are in and those people are out. And most often, that's a power play. It's some sort of a signal to the rest of the people to say, I belong to you because I hate the same people as you. Or or we should stick together because it's us versus them. And the us and them has had some pretty brutal lines in the past. It's not uncommon for that to be race-based. I mean, these days, there's a lot of conversation around gender-based or sexual orientation based. It could very well be age based. You're only allowed to be in this church if you're a certain age or you're only welcome to be there. We draw these lines to keep some people out and others in. And I would like to argue very strongly that has nothing to do with Jesus. Jesus was pretty clear. He said, love your neighbor telling that person that because they belong to a particular group, that they don't belong, that the religion is not for them, that the love of God is not even available for them, to tell that person that because of something in them, something about them that they deserve to go to hell, that's not at all a Jesus message. But this isn't a new idea. I want to roll back time about 2,000 years to realize that This has been something that's been going on since the very beginning of Christianity. The idea of who's in and who's out existed before Christianity was even a thing. You remember, of course, that Jesus was a Jew. And the very beginnings of what we now call Christianity was a group of people who were following Jesus, who were saying, we are followers of the way. 
the way of this man named Jesus, the things that he taught us, the, the beautiful experiences that we got to see when we were with him, his sacrificial love and his resurrection from the dead. These were the collection of things they were talking about, but they were coming at it from a Jewish standpoint because they were all Jews to begin with. But remember the conversation about Gentiles? So let's jump to the book of Acts. And we're going to look at, this is an absolutely pivotal moment in early Christianity. I'm not sure if you know this story. It's a gentleman by the name of Cornelius. And we're not going to read particularly, the, we're not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to jump to the end of it. But Cornelius was a Roman centurion, which makes him a Gentile. Not just a Gentile, but in lots of ways, an enemy of the Jewish people. He belonged to Rome and Rome was oppressing the Jewish people. And so he was, for whatever reason, he had heard about Jesus and he was a follower of Jesus. Now, the early Christians, the early followers of the way were very, very worried about this guy named Cornelius, because how could he be a follower of Jesus? He wasn't even a Jew. He's one of the Romans. There's no way. And so we have this story where Peter has a vision where there's a, a net let down or maybe a sheet that had all sorts of animals in it, animals that he was not permitted to eat under Jewish law. And the voice, he says, the voice of God said, you can eat anything here. And he took that to mean to be reminded that it's not just about the Jewish laws. The message from God is for everyone. At the same time, Cornelius was having a vision, inviting him to go see Peter and make a connection. So that's the setup, which takes us to Acts 10, and we're going to read 44 to the end of the chapter. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and they invited him to stay for several days. Far be it from you and I to stand in the way of God's message of the Holy Spirit descending upon people who we would decide don't belong. Far be it from Peter. This was an utterly pivotal moment. This was a time when the people who seemed like there was no way that they were allowed to belong, that they were invited right into the fold. They were the Gentiles the uncircumcised, the Romans, the Holy Spirit came to them as well. So what does that mean for us today? Well, if you belong to a denomination who draws really clear lines around who's in and who's out, there's some common lines. I'll give you some examples. Um, women in leadership roles. If you draw a line there to say, oh no, because of that person's gender, the Holy Spirit's not as much with them as with these, does that fit with what we just read with Acts? Or perhaps you're part of a denomination that says people who are members of the LGBT community are not permitted to be here. Or maybe we word it in such a fashion that we say, we're going to love the sinner but hate the sin. So are you choosing on behalf of the Holy Spirit who belongs and who doesn't? It feels like maybe we need to all go back and reread Acts 10. The Holy Spirit fell on everyone who was there, circumcised and uncircumcised, Jew Jews and Gentiles. And even Jesus, at a different point, had said, there is no longer Jew and Gentile, male and female. There is nothing but children of God. Friends, we've got to change this. This is a 2,000-year-old problem that we're still up against. So wherever it is that you are, I invite you to take a big step and make certain that People in your community who have felt ostracized, who have felt pushed out, who have felt like they don't belong to God, that they hear from you that they are loved. 
No conditions. No rules. No, well, you're allowed to be here, but only if you fit these particular things. If you speak like us, if you talk like us, if you wear the same clothes as us, if you choose to follow the same things as us, maybe say the same prayer as us, maybe believe all the same things as we do. No, nope. we're past that now. I mean, I think that we were past that 2,000 years ago, but this is a today problem. Let's spread the word of God. That word that says, love your neighbor. All of them. Your Jewish neighbor, your Muslim neighbor, your black neighbor, your Hispanic neighbor, your gay neighbor, your trans neighbor. Love all of them because the Holy Spirit has been poured out on them all. And who are we to refuse the water of baptism to those whom the Holy Spirit falls on? Let us pray. God, it is difficult for us to stand against the majority voices in our communities. It's even dangerous for some of us. And yet your Holy Spirit so clearly is available to all. Remind us to go out in love. Love those who you choose. That means everybody. Remind us to love our neighbor. Not just the easy ones who look like us and behave like us, but all of our neighbors. Amen. I know that I've just said things today that are completely contrary to lots of Christian teaching out there in the world. I know that. I came from some of that. It takes work. I feel very, very blessed that the church I belong to already is doing work in that direction. It's not dangerous for me to say things like this, at least not in my church. It is in some parts of my community. There are some specifically anti-LGBT and still some anti-Indigenous churches in this community. Even the black-white conversation is not a very healthy one around here. But I want to remind you that we are called to love. This isn't easy. It's straightforward, though. Love everyone. Friends, I want to thank you so much for joining me again today and being willing to get a little bit uncomfortable. Please fill the comments with the things that this makes you feel because it's only as we process through, only as we work on this, that we're each going to grow because I need to know more about you so that I'm not saying really, really offensive things. I'm not throwing you off of theological bridges and saying, go swim for yourself. I need to know more about you and what you're in the midst of. Because the other beautiful thing is that if you are able to share, then you will see that all the other folks around here, they're gonna support you too. I love you all. I'm gonna see you tomorrow. I look forward to it. Bye for now.